That's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Welcome to my corner and welcome back to another video. So today's video is going to be a chit chat, get ready with me. I have been wanting to film a get ready with me for a while. I just haven't taken the time to sit down and do it. I did ask you guys to send me a couple of topics on Instagram that we're gonna talk about. We're gonna get cute. If you are interested in my makeup routine, I get a lot of questions about it. We're gonna go over all of that, how to do my hair, all of that good stuff. But before we jump into this video, make sure that you go ahead and subscribe to my channel down below. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and turn on the notification bell so that you do not miss any of my videos in the future. Now let's go ahead and hop right into the video. First up, we're gonna touch up my leave out a little bit. It's not even, I don't even have the flat iron it. Um, it's just a couple of pieces are a little bit frizzy. So I'm gonna do those. Also, my washing machine is going in the background. So if y'all hear that, that's what that is. Okay, so the first topic that I have is what is like living on your own? So if you are new here, I moved into a new apartment um, back in August. I've been in this apartment for three months. Um, and honestly, living on my own has been a blessing. Also, for heat protection, this is the product that I use. It is called the Hair Polisher Heat Protective Setting Spray. This is the OG. My mom used to use this on my hair. And they never did me dirty, so that's what we use. But I would say that living on my own has honestly been a blessing. Like I said, I was raised as an only child. So I don't really have a problem with being by myself. Now, the one thing that I will say I'm spoiled in the fact that Tristan and I, Tristan was my roommate for forever. She was actually my freshman college roommate. And then we ended up living together on our own in 20, oh girl, I don't even know the year. We lived together for at least four years by ourselves. Um, and so when we moved out of our two bedroom this year, we actually moved into the same apartment complex. So the benefit of me living on my own is that if I do get lonely, cause I have those moments, my friends are, we're a really tight group. Being able to go to Tristan's apartment, like, and all I have to do is like walk up some stairs is a blessing. Now, with that being said, I do really enjoy having my own space. I enjoy being able to decorate how I want to decorate. Not having to ask somebody, you know, to be quiet when I'm filming. I do enjoy all of that. So I have loved living on my own. It's given me a sense of peace and a sense of like independence that I didn't have before. Not saying there's anything wrong with staying with somebody. If you financially need to get a roommate or need to stay with your parents or whatever, there is literally nothing wrong with that. Don't let society tell you otherwise because the internet will make it seem like you have to stay by yourself. If you can't afford it, I will not recommend it. Um, but for me, it has been great, honestly. I cannot lie. And Tristan, if you're watching this, I love you. Have no complaints about living with you, but I like living on my own. And if you haven't seen my apartment tour, I'll link it above. Um, I haven't had that many huge decor updates because I haven't really been buying like decor. I started buying fashion stuff. So it'll pick back up towards Black Friday, I'm sure, because I definitely want to get a rug. And my family wants to have Thanksgiving at my house, which I live in a one bedroom apartment, so I'm like, y'all tripping. But my granny's house is super small, so honestly, it'll work. It'll be fine. I just need to get some foldable chairs and we'll be good to go. Okay, so the next topic is kind of about content creating. Um, I actually have two topics about content creating, so we're gonna talk about both of them. So somebody asked me what it's really like as a content creator, like for real. Girl, why I got this one piece of hair sticking up? It can be rewarding, but it can be very tough, especially as a micro content creator. Now this might be different for the people that have like hundreds of thousands of followers or, or you know, have a bigger following than I do. But for me, it ebbs and flows, ebbs and flows. It definitely has its ups and its downs. At the beginning, it's very much a lot of work and no return. Um, because you have to get yourself out there, you have to grow your audience, because you have to put out a lot of free content you do. That's just the reality of it, because brands aren't gonna start working with you right off the bat. They're not. And depending on how fast your audience grows and how engaged your audience is, that's how you get your brand deals. So for me, it's a lot of ebbs and flows. Most of my videos aren't sponsored. This year, I've had the most gifted and sponsored um, content out of the three years that I have been doing content creation. 
um and i feel like this year has been the most rewarding and that should tell you something now if i would have jumped on a tiktok bandwagon back when people were telling me to i probably would have a bigger audience but i was playing i was so anti tiktok in the beginning and now i'm obsessed with it like i love it okay i'm about to curl my hair so we're gonna break this up so it's a lot of work in the beginning with no return if you are not consistent there's literally no point like you can't post one day one week and then post months later like that's not how it works if you do then nobody's gonna see your content and when brands look at your page like they're gonna be like oh she ain't posted in two months like for me working in the industry i try to think about that as I'm creating content so that's why I at least try to upload I try to upload on each platform Instagram TikTok and YouTube once a week it doesn't always happen that way but that's what I try to do at least once a week and obviously based on the platform you might upload a little bit more frequently like TikTok you can upload like two three times a week and you'll be good but yeah I have been posting on my on my channels consistently for about three years and what's crazy is YouTube is probably the platform that I'm most consistent on and i have the least amount of followers on there but i've had my instagram longer than i've had my youtube and then um reels really help take my channel to the next level or take my instagram page to the next level um so we're almost at 10k there hopefully we hit it by the end of the year i'm praying a lot of people ask me like how do you do it like how do you stay consistent girl you gotta motivate yourself and the brand deals will come like they don't come right off the bat trust me obviously it's cool, brand deals are great, and I can make, I'm making additional income right now, but for me, it's not consistent. And one day I do want um, content creators to be my full-time job, but right now I ain't there, and it's cool, because I still work in the influencer marketing industry, so I work on both sides. I work as a creator, and I work as, you know, working influencer manage management for the brand side, so. Until then, your girl gonna be working her nine to five. It's an easy job, but it's still a lot of hard work, if that makes sense. Like it's, it's, it's technically not hard to turn on a camera and create content, but to be creative and build your audience, find your target audience and all that, it's not easy. Don't let nobody fool you. Don't let nobody fool you at all. Okay y'all, I'm gonna be real careful talking to y'all while I'm curling my hair, because as y'all know, I burned my forehead a couple weeks ago. Luckily, that burn did not scar or scab, so I don't want no problems. But um, the next topic that I got was, what? how do I feel about people saying that all content creators are the same? Now, this topic is very, it's kind of annoying to me to see people say like, oh, all the content creators, all they do is go to Target, sip their matcha, um, wear Uggs, blah, 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 where the normal girls at, blah, blah, blah. There are a lot of people that don't do that in their content. There are mom vloggers, there are dad vloggers, there are people who are into fashion, there are people who are into like anime, movies, there are all kinds of content creators out there. The thing is, your algorithm is going to show you what you like. So if all you're doing on TikTok and YouTube is scrolling and looking at lifestyle vloggers and looking at the girls that do that kind of stuff, that's all you're going to see. But also there are a lot of girls and men that like that kind of stuff. I have been an avid Target shopper my whole entire life. Literally, I have been not against Walmart because I'm not gonna say that. I'm never gonna be too bougie for Walmart. Like I'm never gonna say that I'm not gonna shop at Walmart. But I have prepared, preferred, preferred Target over Walmart for forever because my mom preferred Target over Walmart. So that's how I grew up. My mom took me to Starbucks as a child. We used to go to Barnes and Nobles and I would get a iced chai latte as a as a freaking teenager and like preteen. So those are things that I like and I'm sure other people experience that too. So if people didn't like Target and Starbucks, baby Target and Starbucks wouldn't be in business like they are now, they wouldn't be booming. The TikToks wouldn't go viral like they do if people didn't care about it so if that's not something that you want to see on your platforms if it starts getting redundant simply start changing your algorithm start liking other stuff start looking for other stuff there are people i have friends that do diary of a regular black girl and they do all kinds of different stuff than what i do um they do different kinds of stuff than what the luxury girls do and i think with you know the it girl and the black girl luxury becoming so popular it's like 
it's because more and more people are able to achieve this type of lifestyle and we have social media so they can post it and that's the shit that goes viral that's what people want to see like so you can't get mad at people posting that when literally the power of your algorithm is in your hands if you don't want to see that, you literally don't have to see it. You can put dislike and start liking other stuff. The TikTok, I, now maybe not on Instagram, because Instagram is very much a shopping platform. And at this point, I think Instagram kind of shows you what they want you to see. But on YouTube, girl, you good. You're good. Or not YouTube, but on uh, TikTok, you're good. You can change your TikTok algorithm so quick to be something else. Literally. When I was watching, um, when Jeffrey Dahmer, the series was popping, when I was liking stuff about Jeffrey Dahmer, my whole for you page was Jeffrey Dahmer. And I was like, all right, this is starting to get annoying. Like, I wanna look at other stuff. So I started liking and searching for other things and I switched up my for you page. Like, it's as simple as that. It's not that hard. So it's very frustrating when people say like, people are all the same, but it's kind of like, what do you want people to do? When people live similar lifestyles, they do similar things. The luxury girls are gonna be luxury girls because that's just what they do. And then not only that, people are saying like, oh, the OG YouTubers are changing and duh, duh, duh. they make more money. Their life is different than when they first started getting on YouTube. I'm sure that as my channel and channels grow, I'm gonna start changing. Not changing in the sense that I'm gonna be a different person, but I'm gonna grow and the things that I like to do are gonna change. Also because we're literally watching people grow up on the internet. So when they first started off on the internet, certain people, they were a lot younger, they were doing things differently. They might've been a little bit more relatable as people like to say, but like think about how old they were and what stage of life they were in. They were in college, they were broke, they were living with their boyfriend, they was living with their girlfriend. like. They were with, you know, in a different city. So you can't expect people not to change and not to evolve as we're literally watching people grow up into the into a different woman or a different man. Like, I just don't understand it. People are like, oh, like Jackie Anna, for example. Oh, she's changed. I would hope so. The, the, she's rich. I would hope she's changed a little bit and is making better decisions. Oh, she's keeping everything private. She has to because y'all be dragging her for the decisions she make. I would too. I would too when you have a bigger audience so you kind of have a little bit more of a responsibility. So I just tell people to keep that in mind um, when they say that all content creators are the, are the same or oh, you're not relatable anymore. And it's like, well, if it's that big of a deal, they're just really ultimately not that relatable and you don't, you know, rock with them no more, you don't have to subscribe to them. You don't. And they say that. And I would tell you that. With me being like a smaller creator, this is kind of risky for me to say, but I would I would hope that as I grow, as my channel grows, that I change for the better, not for the worse. But as my finances grow, my lifestyle changes, I would hope that I, I wouldn't be the same 25, 26 year old. How old was I when I started this channel? 24 year old that I was when I started this channel. My content has already started to change. I'm already in this new apartment, have started to change my content and change what I want my subscribers to see. Like, that's just the nature of the game. That's how it go. So, that's how I feel about it. Obviously, you don't have to agree with me. Um, we can talk about it in the comments, but that's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. I'm gonna go ahead and do a montage because my hair won't speed it up. Please enjoy whatever music I select. Got to call the radio, open to 10 For you and your friends, you know how I spend in H-O-U-S-T-O-N I get too crazy, had a little bad enough We stay good friends, we get too crazy All I know is that when this cup ends, the next one begins I bet you know me, and you knew me back then And you know how I Okay, y'all, my hair is done. Sorry that the clip is so short my camera overheated so hair is all good we looking real cute um let me turn gina off my bad okay so we're gonna go ahead and clip my bangs these little clips i'm gonna link them down below they're from amazon they're like the best thing ever they don't leave a dent in your head um and my bangs never like mess up when i wear these let's go ahead and get started on our makeup so the first thing why am i so lit <laughs> 
It's like I, I was watching a vlog, so I probably got to boost the energy. So the first thing that I do is my eyebrows. So I'm out of my Fenty pencil. So I'm just going to use this brow pencil by Anastasia Beverly Hills. We gonna fluff these brows up, girl. I usually use my brow gel by um, Merit that I'm almost out of. It's dirty, I'm sorry. So this is by Merit Beauty. It is the volumizing pomade this stuff is fire and then i have it in the black brown color but i have to be careful because it can get really dark really fast so next topic is how do you feel about dh8 slash fake designer oh that's a good question because as y'all know i dabble in luxury items i dabble because i'm not at a tax bracket where i can just buy them whenever i want to um and i used to have a different perspective on replicas. But as I get older and start understanding that people ain't got no money, my outlook is different. So how I feel about replicas. Me personally, I try to get everything as authentic as I possibly can. Now, you guys know that my jewelry that I get, my luxury inspired jewelry is from Herfaux Lux. Some people would consider that replicas because um, it does kind of have the brand's logo, but I'm very transparent about when stuff isn't necessarily from, you know, Louis Vuitton or Dior or whatever. I ain't no problem with it. I got some stuff from Jurly. She like, I don't think there's anything wrong with it because everybody's tax bracket is different. Some people cannot afford a thousand dollar bag. Now don't get me wrong. I have Louis Vuitton bags. I have coach bags, which aren't a thousand dollars. They're a little bit cheaper. I have Brandon Blackwood. I have Telfar. I have things like that. I have a Prada wristlet. So I have authentic things, but I do understand that everybody cannot afford the authentic bag or some people just don't want to spend a thousand dollars on a bag and i think that's okay i think my thing with people from um the internet they be bashing people that order stuff from from dhk and i'm like bro who cares who cares if you want to get the authentic bag sis save up your money get the real thing then by all means do it if you have the money and you want to get a fake bag by all means, do it. I feel like people need to kind of mind their business when it comes to not authentic luxury because if I see somebody on the street and they got a good dupe or they have a good rep, who cares? Now, I do understand that as, you know, somebody that works in the retail space in the fashion industry, um, you know, the love and, crack and care that goes into the designers. Like, it sucks when somebody steals your design and makes money off of it being like a fake, but at the end of the day, fakes gonna happen. Who am I to tell somebody what to do with their pockets? Like, if that's what you wanna do, sis, I don't see nothing wrong with it. Me, personally, I try to avoid replicas. Um, but who's to say that I might think something is real? Like, I get all of my shoes off of gold. Who's to say that I might not get, you know, get got and I might have a pair of fakes. Off of gold. Now, that's one thing that I would never buy is fake shoes. Uh-uh. Y'all can miss me with that. It might be the because I grew up in a, I went to a hood school and I could just, I, me personally, I could just never get fakes. May, a dupe, yes, but actual like replicas of, of shoes like Jordans and Nike, I could never, I <laughs> could not do that. But girl, if you want to spend your money on that, who cares? Who, who gonna pop you? Who? So I think that people need to leave people alone at the end of the day because it's like, you don't know what people pockets look like. They just might not be able to afford it. And if they fake it till they make it, who am I? I'm not finna check your bag. I'm not finna authenticate your bag. I'm not finna be like, oh, bitch, your bag fake. Like, I'm not doing that. Now, one thing I will say is that I would rather somebody have a rep than have fake checkerboard with a bad Louis Vuitton print. Those are just bad. I would rather you just get like a bag that don't have no logos on it. Y'all know what I'm talking about, like the bags that have like the backwards G or like the upside down Chanel. Like, no, I, I don't approve of those. But I mean, hey, again, it's your money. But me personally, I would never. I can't do that. But yeah, I really think people need to just mind their business. If you don't like seeing DHG on your feed, baby, then block it. And DHG has an affiliate program. I don't know if people know that. Um, they've reached out to me before, but I just, <laughs> in, in good faith, I just couldn't do it. Um, 
But yeah, they also have an affiliate program, so that's why influencers push DHgate so much, is because they make money off of that. Not that they're hiding it or anything, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Girl, make your coins, but that's why, people, if you didn't know, that's why you see it on the internet so much, is because people have, you know, affiliate links, and they get commission off of y'all buying from DHgate, so. That's what that is, that's how I feel. Let me know if you guys feel different in the comments. Sorry, I had to put my lashes on. Um, yeah, so lashes are on, so we're gonna go ahead and move on to the face, and then we're also gonna move on to the next topic. Um, so the next topic I have here is, how do I feel about tape-ins and micro-links? That is a very good question, um, especially with the way that the beauty industry, not, not that it's changing, but I feel like black hair is going back to leave out and moving away from lace. Um, you can see on my hair right now, I haven't worn leave out in years. I think my last one with leave out was probably like my sophomore year of college. And when I tell y'all my hair was broke the fuck off, my hair was broken, okay? Um, just in case y'all are curious for primer, I went in with the Milk Hydro Grip Primer and then I am about to use my NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. I have this in the shade Hubehan, Hubehan, I think that's how you say it. I hope so. I'm gonna restock on this for the Sephora sale because this is almost empty. Um, but anyways, you can see a lot of people are moving towards leave out and they want more realistic looking styles. I know I do. I have genuinely enjoyed having leave out for like the past couple of weeks. I think the only thing that I remember that annoys me with leave out is that you can never blend it to match the hair perfectly. Usually your hair starts pooping up or doing whatever it wants to do. That's the only bad thing about leave out to me. Um, but for me, I have learned how to take care of my hair a little bit better, if not a lot better, and I don't flat iron my hair every day. I used to flat iron my hair constantly. Oh my gosh, when I had leave out when I was in like high school and beginning of college. So I didn't understand that that was breaking my hair off. Like, it was ridiculous. But I think for micro links and tape-ins, um, I have this conversation with my stylist because I actually want to get tape-ins but I just haven't done it yet because it is a very expensive style. And I think what comes with that is, it comes with your stylist knowing how to do the service. So one thing that me and Bree talk about is that, you know, people don't know how to match textures. Like people are going to stylists that, no shade, no shade, only show this light, you know, curly mixed, mixed girl hair on their, um, on their pages, me personally, I wouldn't go to a stylist like that because I feel like you don't know how to do my hair. And they have tape ends that actually match the that match the texture of your hair, whether you're four B, four C, or whatever. They have that. Brie was telling me that tape ends and micro links have been allowed for Black women for a while. It just wasn't attainable to those that were, you know, making middle income or making less money. It is a luxury service. It is expensive for a reason. It is, you know, more risky for your hair, but it's a style that lasts a lot longer than, you know, your sew-ins and your, uh, what's it called? Wigs, wigs, wigs last a week and a half, girl. I personally don't see anything wrong with it, um, but I will say that influencers have made it super popular, of course, as they always do. But you just have to do the research on the style and see that it, if it's something that works for you. I would say if you're somebody that doesn't mess with your hair a lot, or if you're somebody that doesn't go to the salon a lot, I would not recommend doing that style simply because it is a, you know, it's like having your real hair. It's basically adding interest to your real hair. So if you don't do your real hair often, then I would not recommend it. Me personally, I wanna try it out and I wanna, you know, start taking care of my natural hair a little bit more. I just like how it looks. I wanna be able to put my hair up in a ponytail, all of that good stuff. Um, but I don't like how people are bashing that as if it is a style that is catered specifically to white women when that is simply not true. I didn't know that tape have been around as long as they have. Um, and you know, it depends, again, it depends on you as a person, it depends on your hair texture and what works for you. But I would say that you should consult with your stylist and then definitely pay attention to what the stylist is offering. My homegirl has been getting micro links from Breeze since before they were popping. Before the Jada Weyas and the Aries were getting tape-ins, my homegirl was getting micro links. 
that's something that she's been doing so that's something that my stylist has been doing and i'm sure there's other stylists that have been offering that style as well um it's just popular right now because it's been on the it girls let me not do that jada way that are you definitely considered it girls um and so people are also i would say that you have to invest in the in the hair um people order hair off of amazon and stuff and it's not holding up and it's like girl you cannot just get the hair from wherever so for me if it's too much and there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with ordering hair off of amazon but what i'm saying is for that style in particular with it being a luxury style with it being a style that you need you know to spend more money on with it being a lot more upkeep i would not go cheap with that style i would invest if you're going to invest and if it's going to be too much money then you know i will go with a traditional sewing or a quick weave with some leave out and call it a day you good like there's literally nothing wrong, wrong with a quick weave you can prolong a quick weave i am here to tell you you can prolong a quick weave baby because that's what i'm doing till i get my money together for my tape bands because now it's a little pricey it's pricey as it should be but i think with that also comes with you know these new wave stylists Baby, I don't know what they doing. And they charging the arm and the leg. Oh, I can get on this topic all day. They charging the arm and the leg. And your hair. <laughs> Baby, you believe in so long looking at me. So definitely do your research. Be very thorough when you're picking your stylist. Be very thorough when you're picking styles. Or girl, go get you some braids. <laughs> get you some braids, sis. I promise that will never steer you wrong. Like. I be missing braids sometimes, but sometimes I know you just want like a bust down middle part, don't we all? Mm. Don't we all? Okay, so the next topic I have on here, somebody asked me how I feel about plastic surgery. Oh, I feel like this is a good topic because I think that with the way that society is going right now, plastic surgery is changing or the look that people want is definitely it's changing and for me i don't think there's anything wrong with getting plastic surgery i think if that's something that you want to do it's something i want to do whenever i get some money i'm getting lipo and i'm getting my teeth done i'm telling y'all that right now whenever i get some money kaylin kaylin's corner is getting lipo and getting her teeth done i want to snatch the waist i'm sorry I, that's what i want um but i i personally am pro choice <laughs> I'm, I'm pro whatever you want to do with your body now i will say um i do think people have gone to the extreme when it comes to plastic surgery that i'm against me personally whenever i get my body done i don't want it to look unrealistic i don't care if you know that i got my body done it doesn't have to look like people would know that i probably got surgery whenever i get lipo maybe depending on the doctor that i go to but I don't like, I feel like a lot of people are starting to look like ants and cartoon characters. They're, go, they're getting very extreme when it comes to the plastic surgery. And it's like, baby girl, you was good with round one of your BBL. Now you look like a cartoon character and that's not cute to me. But with the way society is, it seems like right now the it, the it girl thing is to get a super Sorry, I have to work my beauty blender. Get you a super, super snatch weight and the biggest butt that you could probably get. I don't like it. But I think that's where people, a lot of people, like, start thinking plastic surgery is looking crazy. I feel like when celebrities used to get plastic surgery, it used to be very much swept under the rug. It used to be very much like, oh, it's a secret. Like, it's very taboo to talk about plastic surgery. Now it's accessible to everybody. And so it's starting to make people not want it. Or people are just, you know, turned off because it's just getting crazy. Like, these people are risking their lives for a fat ass. And when they do it, they don't be looking good. Like, mm-mm. You don't be looking good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, I think for me, the thing is, I want to look as natural as possible. I'm when i get surgery so that is what i want for the people that get plastic surgery obviously it's not my body people can do whatever they want with their bodies um but that's when i think people start to talk trash is when the girlies look you know like ants but with that being said again i'm not against plastic surgery but i will say the way that the bbls are about to start going out of style these girls like i don't know what to do they finna have these big old booties and ain't gonna have money to get them reduced that's another thing it's been people 
they have been going to the Dominican Republic and they died because they're not going to somebody that's certified. They're not going to a good doctor. They're trying to go the cheap route. And it's like, I feel like if I can't afford to go to a good doctor, I shouldn't get it done. I'd rather be built like a sack of potatoes and be alive than risk my life for a snatched body or come out looking botched. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. If I cannot afford it, I'm not gonna do it, honey. Like, I'm just, I'm just not. And I've been on this self-love journey of trying to love my body for what it is. And y'all know my platform is all about, you know, promoting curvy styles for, or promoting styles for curvy women and, you know, loving your body and all this curves. But baby, that looks different for everybody. And I'd be lying to y'all if I didn't say, if I said I didn't want no surgery, I would be lying. Tell your fear. So I think my thing for me, for everybody is just be safe, do your research and really think about it. Because another thing that I've talked about with my friends is like, once you have kids, you don't know how that's gonna affect your body. Your surgery body, you don't know what that's gonna look like. So really, really think about it, myself included. Because like I said, it's not worth risking your life for a fat ass. I promise it's not. Because at the end of the day, I wanna know what people with BBLs gonna look like when they're like 50. It's gonna be like these 50 year, old, 50 year old, 60 year old women, grandmas and all of that with like big old booties. That shit gonna look crazy. Like no, I want my look as natural as possible. I'm running out of memory. So I'm gonna put my highlight on and set my face really, really quickly. Um, and then we're gonna get dressed because my makeup is done. Okay y'all, so my makeup is all done. We're gonna take these clips off. Hair is looking good. And then I'll show you guys what I'm wearing before I get ready to go. Hey y'all, so I'm all dressed, ready to go. I was working on a reel, so let me help you share my outfit because I'm running a little bit behind. This sweater is from Revolve. Real cute, the jeans are good American. Please excuse my Uggs in the back. Pumps are from Shoe Deal. And then I am wearing this bag that is from Shein. Jewelry, same old, same old. I need to put some earrings on. But yeah, that's the full look. I'm gonna go ahead and end the get ready with me here because I gotta get ready to go. Your girl's running late, but what's new? Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure that you go down in the comments. We have a conversation. Talk about some of the stuff that we talked about earlier. I love y'all so much, and I will catch y'all in my next one. Let me cut your eyes.